Well, folks, I haven't done a personal ramble video in a while, and this is a topic that has been interesting me lately. I've become more health conscious, and this is something that I'm trying to figure out. As the title says, it's about dairy consumption. I was wondering whether it has a detrimental effect on health or a beneficial effect or no significant effect at all. And I found studies for pretty much every option. So I'm not going to talk about the ethical side here. I mean, I, I totally understand if you have ethical <clears throat> objections to the dairy industry, especially mainstream dairy production, which is horrible. No doubt about that. Um, personally, I think there are better alternatives you know, if the cows are grass-fed and well-treated, have enough space to walk around, especially on smaller farms. I don't see a major problem with that. But again, if you have just on principle an objection to that i can understand that but this is really more about the health side and i've put together a list here of studies that i found it's not comprehensive it's just what i've found so far and i want to talk a little bit about that so i'll i don't really have um uh, a dog in the fight, so to speak. I don't have a particular agenda right here. Uh, if I want to um, influence people to make lifestyle changes, I'd much rather try to persuade you to give up meat. And I'm personally very fond of cheese, as said. So if anything, I'm biased and slightly biased in favor of it. But I really just want to know. I just want to find out as best as I can. So... On the side of studies that are in favor of dairy consumption, here is one titled The Consumption of Milk and Dairy Foods and the Incidence of Vascular Disease and Diabetes, an overview of the evidence. Quote, meta-analyses suggest a reduction in risk in the subjects with the highest dairy consumption relative to those with the lowest intake for all cause deaths for ischemic heart disease, for stroke, and for incident diabetes. Also, the consumption of milk and or dairy foods is associated is, is associated with a significant reduction in colon cancer. Uh, there was also for bladder cancer. There may, however, be an increased risk of prostate cancer. And I can already tell you some of the studies on the other side have found an increased risk for prostate cancer. Here's one that isn't specifically about dairy, but it's about saturated fat. And of course, dairy is high in saturated fat. It's in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Title is Meta-Analysis of Prospective Cohort Studies Evaluating the Association of Saturated Fat with Cardiovascular Disease. This really surprised me because the general idea is that saturated fat is bad. And I'm sure there are studies to support that. But this one here in particular, quote, a meta-analysis of prospective epidemiologic studies show that there is no significant evidence for concluding that dietary saturated fat is associated with an increased risk of CHD, that's congenital heart disease, or CVD, that's cardiovascular disease. Dairy foods, calcium and colorectal cancer, a pooled analysis of 10 cohort studies, that's in the Journal of the National Cancer, in Cancer? Cancer Institute. Uh, quote, higher consumption of milk and calcium is associated with a lower risk of colorectal cancer. Then there is dairy consumption and incidence of hypertension in the journal called Hypertension. This uh, meta-analysis of prospective cohort studies suggests that low-fat dairy and milk could contribute to the prevention of hypertension, which is high blood pressure, by the way, which needs confirmation in randomized controlled trials. And then on the other side, I've so far found more studies against dairy consumption. That's what I'm getting into now. Here is an article called A Low-Fat Vegan Diet Improves Glycemic Control, or is it glycemic? Glycemic, probably. And cardiovascular risk factors in a ran randomized clinical trial in individuals with type 2 diabetes. Um, randomized clinical trial is, of course, uh, always a good source. That is in diabetes care. Uh, quote, both a low-fat vegan diet and a diet based on ADA guidelines improved glycemic and lipid, con lipid control in type 2 diabetic patients. These improvements were greater with a low-fat vegan diet. 
Uh, next one is titled Relationship of Animal Protein Rich Diet to Kidney Stone Formation and Calcium Metabolism. That's in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. Quote, the inability to compensate for the animal protein-induced calciuric response may be a risk factor for the development of osteoporosis. Um, if you don't know about that, so apparently the body reacts to um, an acidic diet, which means a diet that is high in sulfur, that applies to uh, animal protein-rich diets, uh, by trying to neutralize that acidity with calcium so it leaches calcium from the bones which of course is not ideal um, then also found an increased risk for uric acid stones and that's animal protein rich diet in general that doesn't apply only to um, dairy but also meat of course and we've got milk consumption is a risk factor for prostate cancer a meta-analysis of case control studies that's in nutrition and cancer quote we found a positive association between milk consumption and prostate cancer next one milk intake in early life and risk of advanced prostate cancer that is in the american journal of epidemiology epidemiology difficult word <laughs> apparently uh, so they found that uh, da daily milk consumption in adolescence versus less than daily, but not in midlife or currently was associated with a 3.2-fold risk of advanced prostate cancer. And we've got calcium and fructose intake in relation to risk of prostate cancer. That is in cancer research. Vitamin D apparently has, this is not a quote by the way, has an anti-tumor effect on prostate cancer and high calcium intake decreases vitamin D levels, which I had no idea. Uh, cal here's a quote, calcium from food sources and from supplements independently increased risk. So it doesn't matter what source, um, what calcium, what the calcium source is, calcium supplements will do that too apparently. Which is really strange. Normally, you, you're told that you need a certain intake of calcium, and of course you do, but apparently uh, there are safe levels, which I don't know what they are. Higher, yeah, quote again, higher consumption of calcium was related to advanced prostate cancer. Then we've got... Exposure to exogenous estrogen through intake of commercial milk produced from pregnant cows. That's in Pediatrics International. And they found... Oh, by the way, this is a small sample size. This is something I didn't particularly like. Only 18 individuals. So that's something that you always have to look at. I didn't check for every single one of these studies yet how many participants there were. Generally, I prefer meta-analyses, of course because there's a lot more data analyzed, and they also take a look at the methodology and all of that. Uh, so they found, quote, after the intake of cow, mi cow milk, serum, estrone, E1, and progesterone concentration significantly increased, and blah, 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 testosterone significantly decreased in men. So that is something that... By the way, it's a little ironic. There are sometimes people are concerned about soy because there are a few studies that, that found a, a slight decrease in testosterone from uh, consumption of soy. In some cases, those were quite excessive amounts of soy. But there are actually also other studies, um, and in fact, more recent ones. There is a meta-analysis from 2010, for example, that found no negative effect of the soy at all in terms of um, androgen concentration. And there was also one where they, they compared um, soy protein with uh, whey protein and also a third group that used both whey uh, protein and uh, soy protein and uh, while working out and they all had an increase in lean body mass and an increase in testosterone so that that didn't affect it in any way so people are worried about that even though the plants don't actually have actual estrogen they have phytoestrogen which is a different thing and uh, on the other hand milk has actual mammalian estrogen from the cows so that is an actual estrogen intake and that can indeed lower testosterone now, this is kind of in between 
Uh, it's titled Animal Product Consumption and Mortality Because of All Causes Combined, Coronary Heart Disease, Stroke, Diabetes, and Cancer in Seventh-day Adventists. That's in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Quote, Meat consumption was positively associ associated with mortality because of all causes of death combined in males, coronary heart disease in males and females, and diabetes in males. Uh, egg consumption was positively associated with mortality because of all causes combined in females, coronary heart disease in females, and cancers of the colon in males and females combined, and ovary cancer. Milk consumption was positively associ associated with only prostate cancer mortality, and cheese consumption did not have a clear relationship with any cause of death. So that's pretty interesting. And this is something worth keeping in mind, which I've been wondering about. So the milk consumption was associated with prostate cancer mortality, but cheese consumption did not have any connection with any mortality rates. So there is a difference, of course. Fermenting, like the ferment fermentation process generally changes it. So cheese may have different effects than milk. If you have a study that shows health risks from milk consumption, that doesn't automatically mean all dairy products. Sometimes, if you have a study that takes a look at a certain uh, food source or nutrient uh, and, and health issues or mortality rates, sometimes it may not be about the intake of a particular nutrient, but the lack of an intake of another one. Like if you... If the study finds that people who eat large amounts of saturated fat have this and that problem compared to those who don't, is it because they eat so much saturated fat or is it because they don't eat enough polyunsaturated fat or because they don't eat enough fiber or what have you? I mean, there are some pretty obvious ways to improve your diet. For example, more vegetables and fruit. I mean, yeah, some people have even have even claimed that fruit uh, is unhealthy, which is pretty absurd, but yeah, it, it exists. So there are certain ways, you know, reducing your intake of processed sugars and all that. That's, that's very obvious. Saturated fat, apparently not so obvious. Uh, dairy, I don't know yet. So, so far I'm leaning more towards the unhealthy side based on what I've read, but I can't say for sure quite yet. So if you have any more studies, please feel free to link them down below. Um, if you want to talk about the topic, please quote your sources. I don't want to, I mean, it's going to happen anyway, but ideally I don't want to see any random claims, oh, this is bad for you, period. Yeah, please back it up with something. But otherwise, maybe something will come out of this. So thanks for watching.